Hi there, I'm Eitan and welcome to Wix Fixer. This is a series teaching you how to integrate PDF Generator API with your Wix website and create custom PDFs. In the previous video, I showed you the actual integration. And in this video, I will be showing you how to use user input in the front end of your website to create the custom PDF. So let's get started. Okay, so here in my front end, I have built a page with a custom form and it has uh, add your name, add your content, a submit button, and then another button that we are going to use to view the PDF. And if you remember from last time, in our back end, we have this PDF um, file and we've been using this generate PDF URL function in order to generate a custom PDF and it gives us the URL to that PDF, which looks something like this. Uh, this is the template that I have built and the custom fields are the name and the content here. And if we take a look, sorry, if we take a look at this function again, then we see that it took the workplace identifier and template ID and merged data. And basically what we're going to do now is we are going to build another backend function, which is going to be a wrapper function that we are going to pass to the front end. And in order to do that, I'm going to add a new web module and I'm going to call this PDF helper. Okay. And this is going to include any helper functions that we create in order to implement this API. And I'm going to erase all of this and I'm going to export a new function. So I'm going to say export and I'm going to call this function generate uh, PDF from data. Okay. And you know, I'll just like that. Okay, generate PDF from data, and this is going to be an async function. And what we are going to do is we're just going to pass the data over here. And in here, we are going to generate the PDF. So in order to generate the PDF, what we need to do is we need to import the PDF helper uh, sorry, the generate PDF URL function from our backend PDF. And then let's say that our URL is going to be equal to await generate PDF URL. And the generate PDF URL, as you see here, it takes three uh, parameters, which is the workspace identifier, template ID, and merge data. And I'm just going to copy that over uh, from right over here. And put that right here inside of our PDF uh, helper file. And so our merge data is just going to be the data that we pass in to this generate uh, PDF from data function. And the workspace identifier, if you remember, is the uh, email that you uh, use to sign up for the API. So that's workspace identifier. And that's going to be equal to my email. And you're going to want to put your own email over here. Don't use my email because that won't help you. And the template ID, which if we go over to our PDF generator account, so I'm just going to click sign in over here. And if you haven't created your account yet and you haven't uh, created the template and everything, then you're going to want to do those stuff first. And that's what I explained in the previous video. But if you go over to your templates, uh, then you're going to get your template ID from right over here. And I'm just going to say const 
with ID. And if you have several templates um, and you want to generate several different kinds of PDFs, what I would do is I would create a wrapper function for each different template with a unique name. Uh, and that's because this workspace identifier and template ID, this isn't information that we want to be on the front end of our website. Uh, this is kind of stuff that can be hidden for the, from the user, either for privacy reasons or just for convenience reasons. The only thing that we really need to expose uh, and get from the front end is the data. And that's why that's the only parameter here in this wrapper function. And uh, one last thing here is that this URL, it's going to come back as a object with a response and data. And so if I want the actual URL itself, mm -hmm. instead of using URL over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use response. Uh, and I'm just deconstructing the object uh, right here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to return okay, the uh, response. Okay, so when I run this function uh, with the data, what it should do is it should uh, return a URL. And I'm just going to test this out. So I'm going to click right over here. And here in data, what I'm going to do is I'm going to provide it with an object. And here we're going to have name. And I'm going to say um, Dumbledore. I know I'm running out of Harry Potter names here. And the content will be I have a white beard. OK? And these are the two um, data points that I set up in my template. Obviously, if your template is more complex, you might have more data fields that you need to populate. Uh, but this is the data that I set up, again, in previous videos. If you didn't see those, you want to check that out. So I'm going to run this. And now I am waiting for my PDF to be generated. OK, and the generator has returned with this URL. If I copy this URL over and just show you what it looks like over here, then we should see uh, a PDF with the name uh, Dumbledore and the content of I have a white beard. Dumbledore, and I don't see I have a white beard, so maybe there was a mistake in how I passed over the data. So let's go back over here. And here I put a capital C for content, and it should be a lowercase c. So if I clear that and run the function again, then we will get back a new PDF. And let's see what that one looks like. And you see Dumbledore and I have a white beard. So it's always important to test your code uh, as you're writing it out and not wait till the very, very end to test because then it makes it much harder to identify where, you is where your issues are. So now that I know that I have a working uh, wrapper function, what I can do is I can just uh, pass this generate PDF from data to the front end code. And that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go over to my front end. I'm just going to copy the name of this function. And I'm going to go over to my front end code to this page that I called PDF. And here is where I have my input form. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an on-click event listener for my submit button. And let's try and clear this out a little bit so it's a little easier for you to see everything. And here, what we're going to do is I'm going to get my two values. So I'm going to say const name is equal to name input dot value. And I'm going to say const content is equal to content input dot value. And now I need to import my backend function. So I'm going to do that here on the top level. Import from backend 
slash PDF helper. And this uh, is going to be an async function inside the onclick. So I'm just going to add the async keyword over here. And I'm going to say const URL equals to await and then generate PDF from data. And I'm just going to pass in the data over here that's constructed. So I'm going to say const data equals to name content. That should be enough. And I'm going to pass the data over here. And let's console.log URL. OK, so let's preview this. I'll save it first and preview. And now we should be able to generate a PDF using custom data that we input here in our input form. So let's wait a moment as my preview loads. OK, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new input. So let's use Snape here. Whoops, Snape. And I'll write here, I am actually a good guy. And submit. And let's take a look here at our developer console. And you can see here that I got back a URL. And let's just make sure that that URL is the PDF that we want. And you can see here, Snape, I am actually a good guy. So we just generated a PDF using user input. And I'm just going to put one last touch onto our form over here. If I go back to the editor, and I want the um, user to be able to view that PDF right after they create it. So in order to do that, let's go back to see our code. And I'm going to make a new event listener for our other button, which is uh, PDF button, I think I called it, dot on click. And in order for this to work, I'm going to create a global variable up here. And instead of declaring a constant over here, I'm just going to make this our global variable. That way we can access it in other places inside of our code. So whenever I click on view PDF, what I want to happen is, um, OK, so either I can set here, and I can use Wix location. So I'm going to go import Wix location. And I can say Wix location dot two. And then here I can put the URL. So what this will do is this will open the URL in this window. But that's actually not what I want to do. So what I want to do is I want to set the URL of this button when I click the Submit button. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say um, PDF button dot link is equal to URL. And very important is to set the target as well. So PDF button dot target equals to blank. OK, and this is basically what makes it open in a new tab. OK, and I'm going to actually erase this on click for now, comment it out. And let's test our code again and see uh, if this works. So I'm going to preview this. OK, so let's fill out our form now. So I'll say Voldemort will be for our name. And then our content will be I am evil. And then I will submit. And then we'll wait here to make sure that I get the URL. And I will click View PDF. And in a new tab, you have the PDF, Voldemort, I am evil. And obviously, there are some more things that you can set up 
in terms of UX, you can only make this view PDF show after the submission is complete, etc. But that's not stuff that I need to show you how to do that you can figure out yourself. Uh, so just to recap, what we did in this video is I showed you how to create a form on the front end that creates a custom PDF using the Wix integration that we set up. I hope you liked this video, uh, and if you did, please like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.